Hello, everybody, and welcome on Into One Soccer today. Eddie Petrillo, Oliver Flack here with Wheeler Jordan Wilson here on One Soccer. Gentlemen, we have some Canadian men's national team news to get into, or at least when it comes to a player who will now be plying his craft in Major League Soccer. And wow, what the Vancouver Whitecaps are doing, ladies and gentlemen. So not only did they sign uh, Larea at a Kubi, now it is official that Canadian international junior Hoylet has signed a contract with Vancouver. Um, so he, he's done it before the roster freeze, which will happen on Friday. Vancouver now just loading up on national team players, which as we know, about a year or so ago, like Bill Manning, president of TFC, had basically said that's what he wanted to do with Toronto FC, especially with the World Cup coming in 2026. Vancouver, Toronto, both of them will be hosting some World Cup games. Unfortunately, that did not work out for Toronto FC, Vancouver Whitecaps, they seem to have stolen that game plan. And I wonder, given the season that they're having, Ollie, right now they're sitting in sixth uh, in the uh, standings, comfortably in a playoff position at the moment with eight games remaining. I think they've played 26. Um, do you think that this pretty much guarantees a playoff spot for them? I should think so. I, th I think they were going to make the playoffs regardless, to be honest with you. Um, but I do like the, the junior Hoylet signing. I think at this stage of his career, the past couple of years, we, we've kind of seen him maybe casting an eye to MLS. I think a lot of people expected coming home to Toronto would, would be the move that he would be more likely to make. But like Lorea and Adekubi, he gets the chance to, to go to Vancouver. And I think he's a player who could suit MLS. I think he's going to get a bit more time on the ball in, in MLS than he's probably used to in the championship. He's a very technical player, skilled, intelligent. Um, those are the types of players that even when they start to get to the latter years of their career tend to do quite well when they come over to Major League Soccer when you've got the kind of track record that he's got of playing in the Premier League and the Championship for, for a number of years now. So he's a good addition. Um, got a game up to speed. Obviously, he hasn't played much since last European season besides the, the summer games for Canada. Um, but even if he's just coming off the bench and, and making an impact there, I think he'll be a good addition for Vancouver. I am slight, slightly surprised and you know, maybe they needed to to make this move happen budget-wise, but I'm a bit surprised that they let Cordova go now. Um, maybe it was just a case of having an opportunity to offload that contract that you felt you had to take because it really hasn't worked out for him as a designated player. But he was still kind of their, their next man up as in, in terms of the striker position after Brian White. And so going into a playoff run, you know, if something was to happen to White or if you want, you know, to have the most possible threat you can off the bench as well in games that can go deep and go into extra time and so on. Um, I think they could, you know, it's not going to be a killer, but I think they could feel that a little bit losing Sergio Cordova, who over the summer um, had started to play a little bit better after a tough start. So um, love the Hoyler edition, but but I don't think the Cordova uh, subtraction is is just nothing and, and can be completely dismissed. How are you feeling, Wheels? Uh, I'm happy for him if this is the move that he wanted to make to come to come back over. A couple of things that surprised me. Uh, one, the contract just runs through the end of the 2023 season. Um, I, I'm not sure if this is the, the player's decision, but players generally want to get those longer contracts. Um, potentially, uh, Jordan wants to speak to that a little bit. But just the fact that it just runs through 2023. Uh, the rest of this season that that surprises me a bit especially at 33 years of age i do have a question about how much he can contribute right now um all he said it he hasn't played since last season played some games for canada didn't go 90 minutes in the gold cup only played about 15 or 60 minutes overall in the nations league games and this is a player that was out basically um through, through february february right to the final two games of the season due to injuries he has played a lot of games that does seem to be the concern right we know junior highlight it's the playing time but as far as you know the leadership that goes without saying i think there's excitement um to have a player like that join your team but what, what kind of contribution do you realistically feel he can give vancouver yeah like i said this this or as will said there's only uh and you mentioned there's only about eight games left and then you got playoffs as well. Um, it always just takes players some time. Some do it faster than others, but it takes some time to get acclimated to the club, how they want to play, just also the environment, right? Little things like leaving for training every morning from this new place, getting there, getting set up. It's almost like the first day of school, right? you got to get familiar with your classmates, familiar with the new curriculum, all that stuff. Of course, as a professional in junior horror, he can do that and do it quickly, but there still is that learning curve that you have to expect. 
I, I will say Wheels brought it up, but that is probably the most peculiar thing about this because when you're looking at Junior Horlet being 33, you would think that coming back home and merging the two, the country that he loves and the sport that he loves, it'd be maybe a longer deal, two years, two and a half years, whatever it might be. The fact that it's the end of the season just makes me feel like this is a trial run to see if he fits or how that works or maybe just freeing up money. And I know Ali and Wheels can talk about that. Far and you as well, and you can talk about it far better than I do with Tam and Gam and all the stuff that all the acronyms I don't understand. But I'd rather not. It just seems like yeah, like just to see if it works. But to get that Canadian with his experience at 33, and this could be one of his last clubs. I think it was a brilliant move. Wheels, but, you want to finish your thought? Did I pre like I I saw like the wheel of death spinning <laughs> on all of your heads. I'm like, am I on air? I I that was awful. Sorry guys. I, Oh. Uh, technology and yeah. stuff where was i well, you just basically talking about, like, about lack of playing time and just you know injuries. kind of injuries put the bow yeah, on that i mean he, he missed about what two three months at the end of last season and came back and only played the, the the last couple of games so how fit is he is he ready to contribute uh right away the contract just till the end of the season that was a little bit of an odd one for me uh th- th- Clearly, this player would have suitors. He played over 400 games in either the Premier League or the League Championship. That's a lot of football. He's 33, guys. He's he's, mm. he's not 37. And just the only other thing a lot is like how Benny Sartini will use Junior Hoylet. That's a little bit interesting to me. Does he use him kind of underneath Brian White? You know. Uh, um, as an attacker underneath, because that's kind of where he's predominantly played with Canada. Yet with his club side, he played largely, you know, he kind of converted to that wing back position. You have Loray on the right, you have Atakubi on the left, you have some depth in both areas. So it looks like he'll be playing that underneath position, which maybe right now provides him a little bit more cover defensively behind. Uh, p- perhaps that will be good for him. The only other small thing, playing on turf in Vancouver, is that something mm-hmm. that the player wants to do long term? as well so other than that i mean can this boost vancouver's attendance can this get people excited on the west coast they're averaging just north of sixteen thousand a game it's been a real issue drawing fans this season like getting people excited about what is a really good team with a really likable manager with a really likable group of players is this enough to find a, finally get that spark going and get people really excited about this white cap side i certainly hope mm-hmm. so coming down the stretch uh, well, Vancouver and Toronto are going to be playing this weekend in Toronto. Uh, Richie Larea joined Toronto FC in 2019. And then even from there, his international career took off. And I and I feel in, in, in many ways, Richie became known to the country because obviously of his national team contributions. Um, unfortunately, joining Toronto FC when things weren't the greatest, even though in 2019, they did go to the final. And Ollie, a lot of fans do love him. So, you know, what kind of reception do you think Richie will get returning to BMO Field as a member of the White Caps. I mean, I'd be surprised if he didn't get a good reception. He was a top player for CFC through some pretty difficult years, to be honest with you. He didn't always mm-hmm. get the, you know, the great teams of uh, of 2016, 2017, and, and that kind of periods. Um, and I don't think it was a case of him not really wanting to come back to Toronto FC. I think it was more Toronto FC couldn't make it happen with, with the situation they're in, their position they're in, in the standings this season. And so he opted to go to Vancouver and have an opportunity to compete for a championship there while, while still playing in Canada. Um, so, look, I, I think a lot of players who come back to their former clubs when the game is actually happening, sometimes they get a few boos and, and it's whatever. But I think the overall overall reception and reaction to, to Richie is, is going to be fine. Did you ever get nervous about that, Jordan? I don't. I don't know. I'm curious. No, I granted, I, I didn't play at the at a, at a high level. <laughs> you suck. That stuff always just makes me laugh. Um, granted, it wasn't at the same level as a Richie Larea, but still, even two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, saying you suck always just makes you smile. Because I'm like, I, I don't think I suck. But uh, okay, guys, oh. you guys are right. I mean, it would hurt Look, my Richie... feelings. Are you kidding me? I would start to. <laughs> You're gonna cry. like cry in the corner. I would just everyone's sit on entitled the pitch to their opinion, man. <laughs> start oh. crying. <laughs> Oh man, the fetal position. No, yeah. with, with Richie, Richie coming back to TFC for this season, he's been for me the best player and most consistent. And it was the X Factor. And Ollie said it best. Like, I think he would want to come back to Toronto FC, but there were just some things hanging in the balance that didn't really get sorted. Um, basically no more room for him, I would say. Uh mm-hmm. simply. Yeah. But yeah, I don't I don't see him getting booed. I think that fit as well. Uh, if we just bring up Junior Hoylet as well with the Vancouver Whitecaps. 
to fit where this this team can can plug players into different positions. And we are like I could see Horlet as well playing as one of the two and a four or three, two, one. Maybe you're even putting your board galled a bit deeper. There's gonna be options now for Vancouver Whitecaps. But you can look at Richie Larea. He could be playing on the right or the left. Dangerous going forward. And look, this could be a three peat for the Canadian championship next season for Vancouver Whitecaps. Like I know obviously Junior Horlitz only signed until 2023, but if they could re-sign him and get one, two more pieces, dangerous team. They could win it all well, again. Repeat. If they add if MLS soccer adds another DP, they'll have two DP spots to add next year. And it seems like Vancouver hmm. are finally in build mode. So <laughs> they, have a ch- they have a chance to actually strengthen from the squad that they have this season. Obviously, there's turnover for every team. R- in terms of Richie getting booed, he's not going to get booed. But once the game gets on, TFC supporters should dig into him, just like he's the opponent on any other team, right? You come out, you give him his clap, well done. And, and then once the game's on, he's wearing the other team's jersey. Yeah, you're not, you're not yeah. cheering for him during the game. What was crazy to me through the entire process, being down at BMO Field as much as I am, there was lots of fans that had no idea what happened with Richie Larea because this summer was so weird with it, with the nation's league and the gold cup. And people were coming up to me like, where's Larea? Why is not he come back? Why is not he playing the, the way that it was like handled from a communications perspective by Toronto FC was an absolute mess. People did not understand that the loan came to an end and that negotiations were still going on and where the state of play actually was. And for a beloved player on a team, I think that that should be known Mm -hmm. more well well spread beyond just the most hardcore fans. It was a bizarre situation, the way that it played out. And TFC needs to be careful about the way that they do their contracts. Like with the Sorio and some of the money that they've handed out to other players, players are going to come in and ask for more and potentially price them out. And TFC are at a point right now where they simply just can't go out and head out contracts that they would like to, to certain players in Lorea's case in point. Yeah. it was Communication is something we're also going to get into a little later on in the show, gentlemen, because even with the new England revolution and the whole situation around Bruce arena and the players feeling like they've been completely left to the dark, we're going to get into that and that kind of lack of transparency. But you're right, because I've had a lot of people even come up to me and ask me like, what is going on with Richie Larea? To your point, there was a loan. It was up um, and they just didn't have the money to bring him back, right? Like it was just kind of, you know, as simple as that. And then there was also just a little bit of confusion because there were reports, if you remember, of Federico Bernadeschi having interest, whether it was Saudi Arabia or Turkey. Uh, The belief was if they could unload one of those contracts, the belief, by the way, continues to be if they can unload one of those contracts. That was the main conversation that uh, people were having when John Herdman was announced as the head coach is how are you going to turn things around if you don't have money and you have the the two Italians on massive contracts, but then the Federico Federico ended up staying with Toronto FC. They ain't got this. So Richie Larea ends up going to Vancouver, but you're right. Like you just feel like that should have been communicated a little bit better. and, and, And there are still some people who feel like they've been left in the dark. 